All right, welcome back everyone. And today we are going to be kicking off our new series, which is Introduction to Active Directory. So what is Active Directory? Well, it's a directory service that was developed by Microsoft for Windows domain networks. And it, um, it provides a central location for managing networks, resources, like users, computers, groups, and services. Now, Active Directory allows like administrators to manage permissions and access resources within the network. And it's one of the actually um, service that is actually used by many organizations and enterprises um, today on the Windows side to actually, on the Windows side of the market to actually manage, you know, the organization uh, as a whole. So when it comes to AD, it provides like a searchable hierarchy, um, more like a directory. And it's a method for applying configuration and security settings, settings for objects in an enterprise environment. But if you're trying to learn Active Directory, you can also deploy this inside of a lab environment, and you can also test it out as well. So some of the key things that I wanted you to know before we get into the hands-on portion is that Active Directory or Active Directory um, domain services. So sometimes you hear they say AD or ADDS. So the, uh, the extra DS is for directory services, right? And it includes both a logical and a physical um, side of it. So on my slides here, I wanted to go down and show you um, here where I have it, where it includes both logical and physical components, right? So when it comes to the structure, right, this is what Active Directory looks like. So when it comes to Active Directory, like I was saying, it includes both the logical and physical um, side of the house, or we call them components. So on the logical side, you will notice that we have partition, the schema, forest, the domain, um, domain tree, our trees, OUs, containers, and the list goes on for a couple more things. And then on the physical side, you'll talk about domain controllers. These can also be virtual machines as well, or could be actually physical domain controller, physical domain um, controllers, which are just like your servers. And then you have your data store, your global catalog. RODC is for read-only domain controllers, um, your site and your subnets. And we'll dive into these later on the physical side once we get into the hands-on portion. But one part I wanted to pay attention to before we start as the partition a lot of folks don't really know i've heard about the partition right so i'm going to show you another slide here so the partition here right it's more like um the naming context for active directory uh, we call it a database so this right here that you're looking at is basically a big database and normally when you build this database the context is named the ntds.dit right and it contains different partitions of data. For example, you have the schema, the configuration, the domain, and application. Each respectively have its own set of rules that um, it will do for our set of configuration that it does, right? So for example, the schema, it contains all the definitions for the objects um, or the class of objects on the domain. But it also, if you look over here, it delivers these forest wide. And this is something that you actually should know once you're working with Active Directory. And then when we go down to the configuration side, also forest wide, but this also stores configurations for the entire forest. So include a structure, other domain controllers that are on the network as well, and their settings. Then when you go down to the domain, the domain is domain specific. It only stores specific information to that individual domain. For example, their users, their groups, and their computers accounts. So that means if you have multiple domains that fell under that big, large forest once it's built out, that domain piece will only store that information specific only to that individual domain. And then we'll go down to the application. So the application piece is very funny. It will store everything that is not stored in these top three. And one of the key things that you should look at, for example, is like DNS. So like DNS settings inside of the, the entire repository, once this is built out, the application DNS itself will store only the information that is needed for that domain specific, but you won't see it for the schema, the configuration, and the domain. It will only store that information just for that domain itself. 
So now that you kind of understand a little bit about the structure of AD, so we can really talk about, for example, like the forest. So the forest is basically like a collection of one or more domains that have a common um, root or a common schema or a common global catalog. And then the domain tree is like a hierarchy collection um, that is a part of the domain, but it shares the same common root domain um, or the name or, or a namespace that's configured with that forest itself. And then we talked about domain earlier, which is basically a logical group of container objects, such as your users and your computers, and it maps to a specific partition, right? So that way it stays organized once we start talking about parent and child relationships on the other domain itself. And then obviously OUs, if you played with AD before, if you haven't, OU is more like a container that holds the objects for users, groups, and, comp and computers as well. And basically, it just provides a framework for delegating administrative rights or linking groups like GPOs and so forth, right? So that's basically the logical piece broken down for you of the ADDDS structure. Now, once we get over into the hands-on piece later on, we'll, I will show you how the domain controller works, the data store, the global catalog, um, RODC, we might deploy one, the site and also subnets because this is also another piece that a lot of folks don't pay attention to and we will dive deep into it later on for a better understanding so if you if you're wondering then okay so when we talk about all of this how does it work well think about the main thing where at the top level it would be a forest right and let's say you have a large organization with multiple departments and then each department is represented by a domain it will have its own structure and then underneath it, you have departments, and those, those um, departments will filter down as needed. And I will draw this picture out for you, but when we get into the lab piece, you will actually see the structure, and we'll go back to talk about this a little bit more. I hope this kind of makes sense. Um, this is more like the introduction phase, but I wanted to dive deep into it um, before we get into the hands-on piece, so you kind of have a general or a better understanding of how all of this works or come together once we start. So for this piece of the video, we're going to pause here, dive into um, another phase, and then we're going to bring everything back. So I will see you guys in the next portion.